Hi. Hi. How are hey, you? Hey, Chief. Hi, Hi Tommy. Hi, Leah. How, How are, are you? Good. Chief, awesome. we're on. Oh, buddy, here we go. Good, good morning, morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone out there in Facebook land. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Luis Reyes, and I am the Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Exchange. And today, we have a special guest. But before we get to him, let me introduce my co-host. Julie is taking a break today. So we called up the Senior Vice President of Corporate Communications, Judd Ansi. How you doing, Judd? Oh, honored to be here with you today, Chief. <laughs> Leah, how you doing? I'm good, Chief. Good, like always. How about you? I'm doing outstanding. I I'm excited. For those I don't know, uh, me and Tommy were back here. We were just, before we started, you know, we were, we were kind of jamming back here with a little, uh, like I'm Tommy Lee. Ah, right, Tommy Lee? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <Yee -hoo. laughs> hey, John, let's, well, let, let's get this going. Yeah. John, why don't you introduce let me give a, Yeah, let me give a proper introduction. Son of an army sergeant, a Greek beauty queen, an accomplished musician, gifted songwriter, and one of the most entertaining drummers in rock and roll. You might know him from Motley Crue. He's just released two singles from his upcoming Better Noise music record, Andro. He's also a supporter of our military, and we're thrilled to have him here with us today, the one and only Tommy Lee. Hey. Hey, what's up, guys? Good morning, good day, good evening, wherever everybody may be, who knows? Hello and peace. <laughs> peace. Thanks, Tommy, for joining us. We're so excited to have you on. And for everybody watching, I know you're excited too. Drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're watching from. If you have any questions for Tommy, be sure to leave those there too. We'll be reading those throughout the broadcast. And if you enjoy Chief Chat, follow us or just follow us anyway. Um, we have good stuff that we post. And if you want to enjoy this Chief Chat with your friends, go ahead and start your watch party. So a watch get, party. Let's get this going. Watch party started, everyone. Let's get this going. Tommy, thank you so much for being live with us. We're so excited to have you. Know that it means a lot to the service members, military families, veterans, retirees out there to have you with us and boost morale. So before we get started, where, where are you at right now and how are you doing? I see like a studio back there. What, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, thanks for having me, Chief. Um, I am in Calabasas, California, and I, uh, I'm in my recording studio here, uh, the, the, the laboratory. Um, <laughs> um, uh, this is where this is where I uh, this is where I guess I call it my office, but um, uh that's where i'm at and um i'm just stoked to be talking with you guys man this is super cool thanks for having me again man thank you so much so is that where uh you know we were talking earlier i, I played a little snippet of the song and i heard we might as well just get, get it out there now right is that you did a little remix or something for that song called tommy lee with post malone and tyler uh yahweh right yeah yeah man we it was like three days ago uh they asked me to do a remix and I don't know, you know, how much you know about remixes, but a lot of times people will do a remix and you're like, well, I mean, it's somebody changed a few beats here and a, a little bit of this and a little bit of that and call it a remix. Well, this is like a redo. I mean, we put on, you know, heavy guitars. I smashed drums on it, um, bass, uh, there's some strings. It's crazy. It's it's like Nirvana meets Green Day meets the Beatles. Like it, it sounds like the same song, but it's like a next level version. Like it's like it's 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 crazy. I cannot wait for everyone to hear it. Like I think July 9th or 10th is supposed to come. Wow, that's outstanding. That's that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. That's great. Bring a whole new, different genre. You're mixing it in, blending it in, right? The little rock with the genre, with the hip-hop uh, genre. Man, I wish I could just crank it for you right now, but I, I'd probably get in a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> soon enough, soon enough. All right, we'll, we'll patiently wait for it, right, Judd? Yeah, absolutely. I can't wait to hear that, for sure. Yeah. Now, now I have to tell you, Tommy, full disclosure, last time I saw you were hanging from the rafters of the Staples Center New Year's <laughs> Eve 2015. Um, and. And, and just to fully disclose my fanboy status, my first concert was Girls, Girls, Girls. 
a couple of years later, Dr. Feelgood at Reunion Arena, which I believe is where Home Sweet Home was recorded, uh, the video for Home Sweet Home. Uh, yep. 25,000 people yelling your name after you did the bow and you're walking off stage. There's a little piece of a guitar on the stage and somehow, some way you, you looked at me and you were kind of, I pointed at this little piece of a guitar that I still carry around 30 years later. Oh my God. Up, you picked it up, you knelt down and you handed it to me. And from that point on, I knew Motley Crue and you, uh, <laughs> tops in my book. So I uh, just had to share that with you. <laughs> you so, called yourself so a van boy. <laughs> Wow. Well, That's yeah, insane. Yeah. And you know, yeah. you know, you would think I probably things would be blurry and I might not remember that. I remember actually walking over there's splinters of pieces and I remember I don't remember so much your face because it's kind of oh dark and all all that oh, yeah, but I sure. do I do remember walking over and I remember you going like that ah, right there right there right there. <laughs> well, that's what happened. Yeah. I'm like I Wow. He wants that uh, piece. So I grabbed <laughs> it and I, I, I do remember handing you that piece. That's crazy. Oh my gosh. Wow. 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 We need to, hey, Tommy, we need to get that piece autographed. Yeah. Look at all that red space on it. We got to mail it to you. Yeah. <laughs> send it over. All right. We'll Be happy do, to. We'll do. And, I, and, and I'll grab Nikki to. Or, oh my God. Oh my God. Know. Oh, yeah. Wait, no, that was anyway. Again, from that point on, from that, those shows to the last show in LA. Uh, uh, so glad to have you here today. Thanks, man. Were you there? Were you there on the night where the roller coaster, the drum roller coaster got stuck? I was. Yeah. The final night I was there. Yeah. Where, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. You, you were up there for a long time. It looked like a lot of blood was rushing to your head, to be quite honest with you. I, I, I almost started seeing white. I thought I was going to die. I mean, uh, yeah. for any, any of the military folks out there that I'm sure have probably gone through some crazy rigorous training um that was just i I'm, i've never hung upside down that long and, <laughs> and uh and it was i was terrified i was terrified and if murphy's law kicked in like if anything could happen on new year's eve yep. during and, and it was one of those things interesting because that had never happened and that whole roller coaster is ginormous you saw the size of it yeah absolutely um, um it it was it's run by remote control, so there's a lot of wireless technology because uh you know wire wireless technology for no no microphone wires, uh, lighting all that stuff is wireless. So we did a bunch of test runs during the day, like we do for safety reasons, and then uh, we were also filming a live DVD that night. The end. So. Um, they had a lot of wireless technology, wireless cameras mounted on it. All this, there's a lot of wireless communications going on. And the one thing uh, that could potentially go wrong was any, wi any wireless interference, the roller coaster goes into safety mode, which is shuts down, right? And- Upside down, shuts down upside down is safety it, mode. Yeah, that's just when it glitched out when i was upside down but um I, we knew it between all the wireless technology filming and 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 the, the actual live part of it and everybody on their cell phones you know filming it it just went kink and there i was i was like oh my god i can't even believe this is this is not happening to me this is the last night no right no, it was it was it was unreal. It really was. Now we've yeah. heard the rest of the story, though. And to your speaking to your professionalism, you finished. You stood there. I remember hanging yeah. upside down until the track, the backing track ended and yeah. you stuck with it the whole way. And yeah. then you finally acknowledge, I think it's broken. Think and it's then they had to come up and get you. Right. I, yeah. All these riggers are climbing up and yeah. had, had to get me right side up. Un unstrap all my you know harnesses and then i climbed down the rig i think it's like 60 feet 60 feet in the air um mm -hmm. a little scary a little scary <laughs> yeah well anyway yeah, thanks for sharing the rest of the story on that no problem man no problem hey, hey, hey judd we got to get that piece sense over there so you get a sign man that'd be awesome <laughs> yeah I'm hang it in, well hang it in the exchange I'm headquarters i'm gonna take care of it for you judd i'll get it i'll mail it off and, and yeah Tommy gets it. We'll get it signed for you.
Hey, Tommy, so as you know, we have a lot of airmen, soldiers, sailors, Marines, Coasties, and military families watching. Before we talk about a little bit more about your music, our military community would love a shout out from you. What words of, of inspiration do you have for all of them out there today? Man, I, I first of all have nothing but love and respect, um, man, for all, everybody that does, you know, that kind of service um, that, that allows me and so many people to do uh, what what we love to do i mean god bless you all be safe um man it's a crazy time right now um uh, and without me getting uh you know uh political with the <clears throat> the man in charge right now um uh you know i just i just you know i just hope everybody's safe and that we appreciate the hell out of you uh and and, 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 and I've, I, I've had the opportunity several times to go to see how people, uh, you know, how they, how they live. I've gone on submarine tours and see, you know, where, where guys are like living underwater for like six months at a time. You know, I've gone on battleships. I've, I've seen, a, I've got a chance to see, cause I've always been curious. How do people, how do these guys and, and girls do this? And man, it's some wild, wild stuff. I, I encourage anybody who hasn't seen it to go see it. Um, nothing but love and respect. Mad love to you guys. Well, thank you, Tommy. Appreciate that. Yes, yes. Oi. <laughs> 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 Tommy, and as you know, it's been an interesting year. It's been rough for many of us, but you've been able to continue with your music despite these hard times. So can you tell us about Andro and the different vibes it's channeling both masculine and fem feminine? Yeah, I, you know, it's, it's weird. I have, I've always had a very eclectic taste in music. Um, you know, whether it be, you know, male energy tracks or female energy tracks. I, I mean, I love so many different genres also. Um, I started uh, after that tour uh, <clears throat> that Judd was talking about where I got stuck uh, 2016, uh, the final night, I said, I'm gonna take one year off, no music, no nothing, and just clear my head, hit the reset button. And I almost made it about a year. Uh, Cause all my friends were like, there's no way you're gonna sit around for a year and take a year mm -hmm. off, Tommy. We know you, there's no way. I almost made it. Anyway, um, I'll try to give you the condensed version here. Of course, ideas are coming. I'm down in the studio. I'm making all this music. And I have a collaboration list of people that I've always wanted to work with or people, new people on my radar. Wow, these, these, these people are doing some cool stuff. I would love to get them on a track. So anyway, music's written. Um, and I'll just pick the first two singles, uh, one of them being Knock Me Down and the other one called Tops. Um, I had uh, written this music and I sent it to a guy, his name's Kilvane. And I'd been following him for a while and the guy's doing some incredible work, very unknown up and coming artist. I sent him the track and he, uh, he didn't think it was me. It was on Instagram. Mm -hmm. he, he's like, oh, this is some bullshit. Like th th this is like some fake account or whatever. And then he did some research and was like, yo, that's him. That's really Tommy. <laughs> so he gets back to me. He hears the track and goes, man, I would love to come and come and do it. I go, I, man, I just know you will just smash on this. He, he lives up in uh, Northern California came down here, boom. And the same thing with, uh, with Tops. Um, her name is Push Push. Uh, she's a South African rapper and whoo, she's a firecracker. I I've been following her for a while and I wrote this track and I'm like, oh my God, this has her name all over it. Uh, I reached out to her, she came over and boom, done. Um, that's kind of organically how this happened. So. I ended up with this body of work. Um, I had about six or seven male 
uh, energetic tracks and six or seven female tracks. And when I started to, when they were done, I started to sequence the record and how it would play down. And no matter what I did, it just wasn't, it just wasn't jiving. And then one day I just put all the, all the boys over here on this side of the record and the girls on this side. And for some reason, they kind of danced together uh, on their, on their separate sides, but with a common thread and it played down exactly how I liked it. I go, that's it. And that's the reason for calling it Andro, uh, being, you know, having both a male and female side. Hey, and, Tommy, and, so speak. Oh, go ahead. No, 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 no. And, and just, and, and, and just also just confirming that, um, you know, as human beings, we do, we do both have, uh, uh, a, a, a little female and, and male or a, a, a little male and female on in, in just in our, our, our beings. We, ha we have those sides, whether we want to admit it or not, we do. <laughs> hey, Tommy, so you have on, on Andro, you have a song with Josh Todd called Hot Fudge Sunday, but I noticed <laughs> it's only 33 seconds long. What is up with that? It's, mm -hmm. it, it, you know what, the, um, him and I go back and forth and we leave some, some ridiculously funny, silly, uh, you know, voicemails. It's really just, a, it's a voicemail he called me with and they're always so wrong. They are sauteed in wrong sauce. <laughs> like, wrong so, sauce. Yeah, and I'm like, yo, Josh, can I put this on my record? Cause this is so, and, and it was perfect because it goes into a song called caviar on a paper plate. Um, and it's just Josh being ridiculously funny. And so that's what it is. It's actually not a track. It's like a little uh, intro or interlude. All right. <laughs> All right. So you kind of mentioned uh, a couple of these people earlier, but you work with Fred Durst on the videos, Knock Me Down with Kilvane and Tops with Push Push. How did these, you kind of hit on it. How did these collaborations come out? Were you just following them? And you said, I just want to just do it or? or oh. Well, I, well, I've known Fred for a while. Fred was in, when I first broke off from Motley Crue and I started a, a, a project called Methods of Mayhem, we did this song called Get Naked together. And Fred was in the video and I've known Fred for a long time. And when it came time to uh, reaching out for directors uh, for these videos, Fred popped up and I was like, oh man, if anybody gets it, it's Fred because he knows the heavy stuff. He knows the funky stuff. Uh, and so I sent him the music and he was like, and cause he had been over here uh, cause he asked me to maybe produce a couple new Limp Bizkit tracks. And so I played him the stuff and he was like, whoa, T, this is fire. And he goes, you know, and, then, and that was pretty much it. When it came time for looking for a director that we were like, let's send, some tr the tracks over to Fred because he gets it and he nailed he nailed it he he gets that he gets that you know that aggro uh that knock me down stuff limp biscuit style stuff and then he also gets the the more the funkier hip-hop style stuff so Fred was the perfect guy I couldn't think of anybody better to direct these videos yeah no now, the energy on the videos were great, and, and we're certainly excited about your new music, but obviously we'd be remiss if we didn't ask about the stadium tour, which was rightfully delayed for uh, uh, till next summer. Um, I know. Curious, there, were, there, was, there was so much discussion about getting ready, getting ready in the months leading up to what was supposed to be the tour this summer. What, what, is, what does that entail for a band that hasn't played live together in four and a half years? Well, we have, we have blocked off all of, all of May, since the, the tour was starting in June, um, God, we would have been in, I forget the date, the, the tour would have started last week. I think it was June, uh, I wanna say 16th or 17th in Florida. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I'm happy. I, I mean, I would have been stoked that we were, would have been uh, on that stadium tour right now, but it's cool. It's just been moved back exactly a year uh later so that'll be fun but the preparation we were uh we were going to start rehearsing in may we would rehearse for well over a month and then move to florida and set up in the stadium for a 
for 10 days prior and rehearse with the, the massive production and all that stuff actually in the stadium. So, so that, okay. Uh, so 10 days in the stadium. So did the, did, did you get to the May rehearsals or, or didn't even get there? Cause it had to be delayed. Yeah. We didn't even get there because we were having discussions about moving the, the tour from June to July. We were kind of going month to month. So if we would have moved it to July, we would have started rehearsing in June. Um, and then, you know, just things haven't quite uh, cleared up as fast as everybody would like, I'm sure. Um, so it just got moved back till, uh, till next year when pr probably most sporting events and big, uh, you know, uh, stadium kind of events where there's a lot of people in one place can happen again. That's, gonna be a, be a minute i guess tommy and motley crew you has set a high bar in terms of stage production for decades how much work had already gone into the production elements mm. and then what can fans expect when the stadium tour does launch again okay well i'd have to make you all sign an nda <laughs> and, and that includes uh, your firstborn your no i'm just kidding um uh, He's I, 16 right now, so you can take him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I, I got two. I'll, I'll welcome another one. <laughs> um, I, um, the, we, uh, and, and both, both myself and, and Nikki, uh, six, we, we, we get super involved in, in, the, in the production end of things, and we have been designing it for months, um, and it's absolutely insane that it's all sitting in a giant warehouse um ready to go um i can't divulge too much um i can just tell you that if in true motley crew fashion you know how we do things we either we either go big or we go home and that's just all the way we've always been and to have you know a 40 60 80 thousand seat venue with an open roof you give us, you give us guys those kind of like parameters to play with. Mm -hmm. Look, look out, look out. Right. So there's some crazy, crazy stuff planned. And I wish I could tell you. And, but you know, what's weird about today with everybody and their cell phones, you'll know about it the first day because it, it's, it's on YouTube. And then that ruins kind of ruins the surprise for everybody to show up and go, Oh my God but it is what it is. That's how it is these days, but um, you'll see then. But I, I can, I'm telling you right now, it is ridiculous. Well, to your point, a lot of people will find out, it's my understanding the stadium tour sold in the neighborhood of a million tickets. So a yeah. lot of folks will see it next year. Uh, yeah. You spoke about in, in true Motley fashion, true Motley fashion, whether it's in, in actually true Tommy Lee fashion, whether it's the dirt book, whether it's the dirt movie, whether it's Tommy land, there is, maximum transparency and yeah. so I, I'm, just, I'm just curious at what point uh you made a decision that you wanted to be this open with your fan base and and and, and why why it appears to be important to you at this point we you know what that's just something that we've always done we wear our emotions on our sleeves we we uh, we've just been we've just been that way ever since the beginning um i would just believed uh you know that's just our rmo with our fans is to let them know exactly how we feel what we're doing um and just being open about everything uh because th we've seen uh other artists not be that way and it's just not cool you know um i don't know we're we're just some great guys, man. That's all. <laughs> hey, Tommy, I'll tell I you. I myself on the back. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell you the, the truth, right? So, so I was raised in a Spanish household, urban setting, you know, salsa, merengue, bachata, and then of course, hip hop, R&B from the ur urban setting side. And I, I wasn't familiar with, with Motley Crue growing up. I'll tell you the truth. Judd told me, you need to go watch this movie. And I was like, okay, what is it? He was like, the dirt. Everything you need to know is in there. So I watched it. Oh, last, wow. Last night, I watched it and I was like, 
All I need is one night of partying with you guys. I would have lasted me a lifetime. That was <laughs> crazy. But I do have a question for, yeah. some, for, for, for someone who's not familiar with the Motley Crew. How accurate was that? Was that film like there was some crazy stuff going in there, especially the part about your life, the 24 hour part where you, know, <laughs> you wake up, you do this, then you wake up, hang up to the bed. And I was like, man, this guy, man, that's that's pretty. <laughs> He's Yo. not lying. He was we were texting about this last night. <laughs> oh, my God. Yo, chief. I, but I listen to this day. I pinch myself every day wondering how am I still and the rest of the guys, how are we still alive? Like. We literally, we ran it till the wheels fell off in fourth gear, popping wheelies like, Bruh! like <laughs> that's uh, that's just how we how we did it. I mean, and we still kind of do it here and there. Um, but um, there's no exaggerations in the movie. That's exactly how it went down, and, and that is why we chose uh, Jeff Tremaine to direct it. A, he's a, a huge Motley fan. And uh, he directed, uh, if you're familiar with Jackass or Bad Grandpa, or yes. uh, yeah, he's, done, he's done a lot of stuff. And when he sort of pitched uh, us, us, you know, the, his direction in the movie, he's like, listen guys, first of all, there's nobody better to direct this movie than me. I'm the biggest fan on the planet. And I'm, and I'm, going, to, I'm going to take the book, and the script, and I'm going to make it so authentic down to the telephones that were used at that time, the clothes, the cars, the, the environments. I'm going to recreate. I'm going to take everybody that wasn't around or was around, other one, right back to that time. And he was so adamant about recreating it, and that was important to us. We were like, because it's definitely not that was not definitely how it is now. Now things are so much different. And, uh, you know, uh, and the dedication that, uh, that the actors th that were casted that played us were just above and beyond. Like, I, I can't even tell you, uh, I've never seen anything like it. Uh, for, for instance, the guy who played me, Machine Gun Kelly, he, 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 I've been friends with him for a while. He calls me up. He's like, yo, T, you're not going to believe this. I was like, what? He goes, dude, I'm playing you in the movie. I was like, what? And, and we got the same build, kind of lanky, right? Like, got the same kind of, like, vibe. We're a lot alike. And I was, I, I was happy about that. And he's like, listen, I got the script. I want to, I want to, I want to know exactly every line, how it happened. Did it happen just like this? Was it a little different? I want to hear your version. I want to, I want to make you proud. I'm going to, I'm going to just, I'm going to murder this part. And I was like, yeah, come on over. We spent days going through the script, every line. And then the guy goes out and takes four and a half months of drum lessons, learning how, how exactly how, how all my moves, how I spin the sticks, how I, Sm smash the sticks off the drum and and shoot them up under the air and catch them behind my back and all this like he he learned all that stuff I, he's not a, he's not even a drummer like who does that you know like he really went for it and all the guys that played us did a fantastic job so uh needless to say we were really stoked how it came out and i just think about kids like i don't know they're you know 18 years old or younger watching the movie going like is that how it was back then my god what did we miss <laughs> what did we miss yo hey you don't you don't have one of these recording your every move uh, yeah. yeah oh my god yes this is pre the, oh my god if if cell phones or smartphones were around back then we probably wouldn't be having this conversation right now <laughs> <laughs> Okay, there was one part in the movie that, that Judd, I, I watched a video that it kind of glossed over, though. You were kind of, I think, in a, in a restaurant and you talked about doing the, the rotating drum thing. It just kind of glossed over it, though. Is that how it just came about? You were just sitting there like, oh, I want to do this idea, but it never talked more about it. It just kind of happened. 
How, how did you come up with that? Like, did you see that somewhere or was that just, I just want to rotate with drums and play drums upside down, inside out? Yeah, you know, that, that's actually a really good question because, you know, you wonder like, where has Tommy come up with this stuff and why? Like, um, I, I'll give you a, a, a quick reason. Um, as a kid, I'd go see some of my favorite drummers and here it comes. The, you're watching the show and it's drum solo time. Guys back there like, and I'm looking around and people are going to buy a beer, going to get a t-shirt, uh, going to the bathroom. And I'm like, wait, you guys, he's smashing. He's murdering the kid right now. Like, what are you guys doing? And I was like, okay, I, there's a problem here. A guitar player plays, you can see his fingers play, you can see the other, the pick hand, right? You can see all that. The drummer plays, there's a wall of drums in front of him, and he basically looks like Muppets, or like a like animal from the Muppets. All you see is hair and sticks, right? You can't see what he's hitting. So my idea was, I know why people are losing interest is because they can't see what's happening. So how do I give people a bird's eye view of what's happening? So if you were in the audience, I figured if I took my drums and they were on a, you know, on a platform here and I rotated them up, up like this, all of a sudden you'd be looking, uh, the audience would be almost looking from above, right? Does this make sense or is this backwards mm -hmm. on, on no, camera? No, it makes sense. Okay, so I'm flipping the drums like this. Now you can see what my feet are doing, my hands are doing, the, the tricks I'm doing. I mean, you can see you, you know, scratching your nuts. I don't know, like <laughs> wh whatever you could. I'm trying to keep it clean here. Um, uh, you, you could see, you could basically see everything, and that got people's attention. People are like, "Whoa, that dude's crazy." You know, and then that just went from tilting them up uh, 45 degrees to the next tour, a full cage rotation forwards, backwards, uh, sideways and gyroscopic. Then I went to flying out over the audience because my next thing was, how do I get the person in the worst seat in the building in the very back? How do I get him or her a front row seat? So what do I do? I'm okay. I got this. I'm going to bring the drums to you. So I brought the drums all the way to the back of the arena. And now this person with the literally the worst seat in the house has got a front row going, Oh yeah. Right. Wow. So, and so that just, that's been sort of the evolution of just me trying to, uh, you know, I, I want people to walk away going like, oh, my God, what what did I just see? You know, and so I've just I've constantly tried to take the drum solo um, to just another level every single time. Like at this point, I don't know what's left. Do I shoot myself out of a cannon? Do I uh, you know what's next? Well, I think the formula is working. You've been keeping them uh, since 1981. You've been keeping them. You know, wanting more, so it's working. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna ask, you're getting a lot of love on Facebook. I'm gonna scroll through these questions. A lot of hellos. I'm gonna scroll through a couple of fan questions. So, oh, cool. Here Here's one from Christine Daniels. Tommy, my son is a drummer. I've taken him to one of your shows. What's the best way to encourage him to continue his drumming? He's 11. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh <laughs> uh, man. Okay. Well, first of all, I would. I would like to say, um, <laughs> um, your, your, uh, what was what was her name? Christine, Christine Daniels. Christine, you are a sweetheart. Uh, first of all, because when your child picks drums, you gotta be you gotta be a special lady because that's some like ah, <laughs> right? What you're like? What? Why couldn't he learn the flute? Or the piano. Um, I put my parents through hell. So listen, I know where you're coming from. Um, um, but words of encouragement is, man, uh, I mean, 
I, I can only use what influenced me to give words of encouragement. And that was to A, to, to be yourself and develop your own style, number one and foremost. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with putting on headphones and playing along to something that moves you and, or inspires you and, and, or, and, 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 and even you know, emulate that and then put your own spin on it. But uh, playing along to your favorite stuff, if it's, if it's your favorite and it moves you that much, man, go at it and, 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 you know, and, and emulate it and then, and then start putting your own flavors on it and doing, doing it your own style, I guess would be a good start. And, um, and, and for, for, the mo for Christine, for the mom, you know, they make electronic drums with her that are pretty cool that you can put headphones on and rock out to and not make you crazy. <laughs> Good tip. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great tip. Tommy, here we go. I'm gonna read a couple yeah. more comments and questions. William Lumblood says, William Youngblood says, I already have tickets for an Arlington concert next August. Can't wait. Uh, people saying lots of hellos from all over the world. Chip Wilson says, ask T-Bone. T-Bone, I guess that's, that's a nickname. All right, if he is psyched to be back with DW drums. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, T-Bone's T my nickname. T for Tommy and Bone, because I'm kind of skinny, whatever. Um, yeah, that one's stuck. My guitar player named me T-Bone one day, and that's been it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, su I'm super stoked to be back with DW. Um, I, 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 I've been with DW for years, and I, I left shortly and went to uh, to Pearl Drums for a minute because they were on some some uh, some modern uh, uh, electronics that were incorporated within the uh, acoustic kit. Um, and now D uh, I'm back with DW because they're on 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 a, on a whole other uh, level now too. So yeah, I'm stoked to be back, um, um, and uh, I, I look forward to uh, you know. Uh, you, you'll see the you'll see the kit. It's actually in the other room. I uh, just for, just was playing drums on it um, uh, a few nights ago. Yep, stoked to be back, man. They're badass drums. Awesome. Here's another one from yeah. Donya Bella Bella. Would Tommy Lee consider creating and performing a country single? A country single? A <laughs> country single? I don't. I don't know. It's, okay. Okay. Maybe she doesn't know what you play. I don't know, Donya. What are you asking here? Oh uh, yeah. Is she confusing me with Tommy Lee Jones, the actor? <laughs> <laughs> no. Possible. I'm gonna we're gonna skip that because I don't know. Okay. I just asked, but here's another question. Who do you want to work with on future? Who would you like to work with on future projects? Oh man. Um uh, I wish I had my list in front of me, but I can just off the top of my head, uh, there would be some really cool people I'd love to work with. Uh Lenny Kravitz is one. Uh uh, I've always wanted to do something with Prince, uh, but that's not going to happen. But uh, I've always loved that guy's stuff. And as a matter of fact, I covered a Prince song on on the new Andro record. Oh, wow. It's called it's called When You Were Mine. Killer song. Um, who else? Man, there's so many. Uh, oh, there's so many people that I would love to work with. Um, there's a. Uh, Geez, everyone that's, uh, God, Halsey is amazing. Diane Wood, uh, uh, man, I've got to, I've got to work with some of my, my heroes also and play with them. Um, shit, I'm, I'm sorry. I wish I had my list in front of me, but you know, there's a lot of people out there that are extremely talented that I, uh, idolize and would love to work with they're, they're really well, but, and you, you were sharing that you got a remix of post malone you're working working on so uh yeah that'll be, uh, yeah yeah so there's a Check army it. family and mwr program says hi tommy do you remember playing on the army concert tour at fort mccoy uh years ago that was an it, amazing night yes i do i do that was awesome man you know it's it's so cool when you get to do that kind of stuff because, um, you know, I, I personally don't know how much entertainment uh, those guys and girls get, you know, I'm sure it can't be that much. So, you know, you can feel that kind of vibe come back uh, when you're on stage of, of appreciation, 
you know, where, where so many places are just like, oh yeah, it's another concert where, you know, folks in the services are like, man, we only get one of these like every, I, I don't even know how much they get that, but you can feel it. They're like, yeah, you, I mean, it's, it flies off, off of, off of them back onto us and you can feel that stuff. Um, that's always a pleasure to play for, for y'all, man. That's awesome. Well, if you're not doing anything this summer, might be yeah. able to put something like that together. That'd be pretty cool. That would be fun. And I would love to. I would love to. Hey, Leah Judd, did I miss any 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 comments or anything in there? There was like a lot, there was like a lot of comments and I, I just scrolled pretty fast. I was gonna ask if you saw this comment from Linda. She says, My family is big crew fans. My two-year-old grandson's name is six S I X X. Whoa. That's so wild. You know, um, well, I could go on about that one. Like, it's crazy, um, you know, that, and, and it's such an honor. And uh, when people name their children, uh, their, their pets, um, you get, I mean, you see people, I'll have people come up to me all the time. It's, it's an honor. It's beautiful. Thank you. you. You have people come up to you and they're like, man, you know, sign sign my my body you know in all kinds of places and they're like <laughs> i'm gonna go get this tattooed in and i'm like hold up are you sure that you want my name on your body think about this when you're i don't know 75 years old are you still going to be like yeah that's dope <laughs> you know so i I'm, I'm i'm always a little apprehensive about doing that um but a lot of people are like, no, do it. I want it. Um, and it's pretty wild, man. I mean, that's, uh, that's for, for something to, to, for somebody to want something like a name or, or an autograph tattooed in uh, permanent is, uh, I don't know, it's hard to explain. It's, it's wild, it's weird, and it's awesome. <laughs> awesome. Chief, one more. Jason Rosenberg, he says, Tommy, last saw you all in 1992 in Germany at Monsters with ACDC and Metallica. Will you bring the stadium tour back to Europe? Well, that's the plan, that's the plan as of now. Um, yes, that would be awesome. And that was a super rad concert, by the way. Um, yeah, that, that's the plan. It starts in America and, you know, we were planning uh on america and then after you know as that's going down the we're we're planning uh you know where it will travel after that you know sort of we were just trying to get that one off the ground and the stadium tour like sold out so quickly we we're like all right i guess we're taking this everywhere <laughs> tommy you've been so generous with your time before we say goodbye uh can you l let us know where can we go to find out more about andro hear the new singles and understand you've been quite involved in social media especially in the past year year and a half uh your social media channels as well yeah um i guess uh well tommylee.com is the, my website has all the info there um um uh the, the music's on all your you know uh, platforms apple music spotify um i'm probably missing a bunch of them it's it's just type in my name and andro and you you'll you'll find me uh instagram is uh, tommy lee um uh twitter jeez i uh he has people for that judd he has people for that <laughs> yeah. i get the i get the feeling he's he does a lot of it himself but that's no, that's just my i yeah i actually do i enjoy it i really dig talking to fans and hearing you know uh the good and the bad um um it's fun it's fun people and and you know i i, I always put myself in in uh you know in the other person's position i mean if i could be talking to like john bonham who is my drumming hero and i could be shooting him a message on instagram or something man i i, I don't even know what I, I would trip out so when when i respond to people they're like oh my god i can't believe you you know it's cool. It, it's cool. There's something cool about it. So I'm pretty hands on when it comes to social media. I, I, I do enjoy it. Um, it's a lot of fun. 
Um, and uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'm out there. I'm not hard to find, man. I'm not hard to find. <laughs> Tommy Lee, you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen, or second, third. You probably heard it before. Heard it since 1981. Look up Tommy Lee. It'll, it'll come up, right? Especially his new album, Andro, um, which is, hold on. When, when is the release? Is that released? October. 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 Yeah, October. I've got, I, I want to say the, the 11th or 15th. Yeah. Jamie's watching. Jamie, if you have the date, will you share it with us in the comments? Yeah, thanks, Jamie. <laughs> hey, I do have one question. Here we go. Uh, out, out of nowhere, I was talking to a group called, uh, I believe, Eva Under Fire, and they brought up a, a movie that's coming out in October. Is it The Retaliators? The Retaliators? Is, you have something to do with that. Oh, wait a second. Judd, am I off, Judd? I, you know, uh, I, yeah, I thought it was a better noise music uh, movie uh, that you might uh, be involved in. With yeah, uh, yes, you know, I, I don't know. I think at one point I was going to be involved in, in doing something with that, and I'm not sure if that actually is happening or not. But it's possible. It's possible. We we will stay tuned. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll see a cameo in the movie, but Tommy, uh, thank you so much. It's been an honor having you with us. We, we appreciate you spending some time with us and of course, boosting morale for all of the airmen, soldiers, sailors, Marines, Coasties, the military families, veterans and retirees that are watching today. Thank you so much. Please stick around real quick after we go off live. I just got to get some information from you, but thank you so much for spending time with us. Thank you guys for having me, man. Like uh, y'all be safe and, um, Again, thanks for having me. It was nice to spend the morning with you guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Tommy, thanks. Julie, we off? No. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs>